Hi, this is Terry with Sweet Stitch and Embroidery and Design. Thank you for stopping by to check out this video. This is a, a copy of an embroidery design that I have. Uh, it's a tea light cover. I bought it from Embroidery Garden. And often when I make these tea light covers like this, I don't just make one. I make several for the animal shelter or some other group maybe that I'm doing them for. And uh, it's easier if you have more than one in a hoop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I copy and paste one design so that I have multiples in a hoop. And then I also change the stitching order because it's easier when you group them together. So you're not just stitching the first design and then going to the second design. Sometimes that causes uh, puckering on the stabilizer in the hoop. It's just a lot easier this way. So what we'll do first is we need to rotate this design. So we click the design and we go up here to the uh, menu bar and there's a rotate button and you can see when you hover over it it says rotate so let's left click and that moved it just the way we want it problem now is the uh, hoops not large enough for this so I'm going to go over here to the hoop button and I'm going to use my brother hoop and I think my 5 by 7 will be sufficient here so let's do this one here. Actually, since I'm using my multi needle on this one, we'll use the 7 by 5. Well, 7.09 by 5.12. But, you know, different machines will use something different. This is just a guide. I'm just uh, making sure I've got a hoop large enough to put two designs in. So I click OK. And as you can see now, I've got plenty of room here for this design. And now I want to move it over. But first what I need to do is copy and paste it too before I start moving anything. So let's uh, make a copy of this. Hit copy. Go up here and click the copy button. Or you can go to edit and copy. There's three different ways you can do this. So whichever is easier for you. You can do copy on the menu bar. Or you can hold your control button and press the letter C. Or you can just do the easy way like I like to do and just click the copy. And notice what happens when you click the copy button. It gets grayed out and then the uh, paste button becomes active. So you can uh, do control and the letter V. You go back up here to edit and click paste. Or you can just go back up here and click the um, paste button like I'm going to do. First though I'm going to move this design over because when you click paste what will happen is when you uh, copy something in Sew Up Pro you can copy it and then when you click paste it will paste it directly over what you just copied so sometimes people will think that they've not copied and pasted when actually they have so I'm going to show you what we're going to do is we're going to scoot this over a bit scooch it over now we're going to click the paste button see there it is and notice too your cursor is pointed when you move it over here within the design box the design area you get little crosshairs and that shows that you're able to move the design and this is in every software program you have pretty much see it changes so then we can move this over with our cursor by holding it down with a mouse button cursor or we can also use our arrow keys which I'm going to do see it moving over And if you want to move it over just a little bit without um, as much of a space as you do when you use the arrow key, you can hold down the control button and then use the right arrow button. And watch, it'll move over just a little tiny bit. I hope you can see that in this video. It'll move in like little increments, and that's called nudging. It's nice if you're placing letters in a design too because you can just scoot them over just a little tiny bit. It's called nudging. Hold the control button and use the left, right, or up and down arrow, whichever you know what you're doing. Okay, that looks pretty good right here. So now that we've got these here, what will happen when it sews, watch this. Here's your sewing button. And if you don't have that on your menu, all you have to do is make sure this is checked. The sew show bar. <laughs> and click the play button and as you can
you can see uh, when it's stitched, it only did one design at a time. And I like to have it set to where the first stitch, the placement stitch, stitches for both of these. It just makes it easier when you're doing it. And that way it won't wrinkle up your stabilizer or anything either. Uh, sometimes if you do everything that went into your hoop, it starts pulling on the stabilizer so it's not balanced. And it looks kind of weird. Plus, I just like um, everything being continuous where it like flows back and forth. So let's go here. And there's your first stitching right down here. This is the first stitch of the second design. So we want to move it up here. So hold down your shift button if you got the color highlighted, which I do. Press down your left mouse button. You notice when you press down the left mouse button, it changes. You see a little piece of paper underneath it. That means you can drag it. So take it up here and put it underneath the one. And then when you release the button, you can see that now you've got the first placement stitch and then the second placement stitch of your applique. And uh, one thing you can do too is you can click these lines here so that you know the space gets a little smaller because I really like to use the comments to move this out and that helps me sometimes. What I'll do is uh, this will say placement stitch. And then here we come to our tack down stitch. So just type that in there. And then uh, let's go to our next tack down stitch. I know this isn't always necessary, but it helps me if I'm looking at design later. So then I click on this with the left mouse button again. And I drag it up here. Oops, didn't drag here. And I released it. And then I'll go to our next one down here. There's this one. And this. And I always have uh, each applique stitch a different color. It just makes it a lot easier. So hold down the shift button, left mouse button, and then drag it up here again. So now we've got them all together. All the different sections grouped together. So this one here is our satin stitch. There's the other stitch too, but we'll just call it satin. And then this stitch here is the outline stitch. And when you're making these embroidery garden uh, tea lights, this is where you uh, put your felt on the back of your design. You remove it from the, uh, you move the hoop from the machine. And then you flip it over and you spray it lightly with adhesive spray and then put the felt on the back. And if you don't remember to do that, you're in trouble because the whole thing will stitch. So that's why it's also good to have the stitching order change like we did. So we'll put remove hoop. Sometimes it's nice to just remind yourself. Backing stitch or outline stitch. That sounds better, doesn't it? I've trained myself to where I always look at my comments. It's just nice to have. Okay, and then. Um, when we look at our stitch order, we've got this, our tack down. Notice what happened though when we did our tack down? Go okay, first this one, this one, and then the next stitch just jumps over. That's not really necessary, so what we can do is we can change the stitch order again. Good practice for you. Left click on this, drag this up. Now notice when we do this, first one, second one, the next tack down, I mean this uh, tack down stitch, there we go. It'll go, uh, it doesn't have to move, the needle doesn't have to move from here to there. 
because it's not really necessary. That one, this one for the placement. And then when it gets to the tack down, see it's still on this design because it's not necessary to move it. Okay. And this one's already here, so we don't have to worry about the next one. And this one here jumped over, so let's move this one back up just so everything flows together. There we go. Now you notice when we're uh, clicking these, we're not jumping around. There we go. And that's all there is to it. I hope I was able to help you. And what we need to do now is save it again. And usually I do this at the beginning and I forgot to do that. Uh, so just click save as because you don't want to save over your design. And I've already got if you like cover adopt. So let's put a number two in here. What I do is I'll do an X for times two and two. I already saved it once, so I'll probably probably save it again. Yeah, here we go. So we've got it there. And if we sew this, it'll stitch around perfectly. Uh, if you listen to it, there you go. Sorry about being so bad. There we go. I had it stitching fast, so it didn't take long. And that's all there is to it. I hope I was able to help you, and thanks for stopping by. Uh, you can find other videos of mine on Sew Up Pro on YouTube. Uh, just click the subscribe button by my name. Thanks for stopping by.